Currently, electric vehicles need to be plugged into a power source to replenish the battery. And, well, that can be just one more charge cable than we all really want to be carrying around with us. But there is a new way forward, wireless charging. It's an ingenious way of transferring electricity across thin air. And it's being used right here in Formula E to charge the Qualcomm safety cars. So, how does it work? And how long before we might even see our cars being charged as they're still driving along the road? Our lives today rely heavily on electric gadgets and I can definitely testify to that. They all run on electricity, but when the battery starts to run low, only a very specific connector can help us out. In an age where a computer can speak to computer across oceans, our day can rely literally on a tiny little connector. There's been talk of making universal connectors, cables that will fit all appliances, but with millions of appliances already in existence, that could never work. Unless the cable isn't the answer after all. Simple ease of use has meant wireless charging pads have spread across the world in cafe and fast food chains as well as car dashboards. But what is this technology and how does it work? Why is it becoming so widespread and does it have the potential to become ubiquitous? So Bruno, you're the FIA Formula E Qualcomm safety car driver. What exactly does that job entail for you? Basically, uh, the safety car, it's, uh, it's, it's used when you have, for example, some crashes on the track, so the marshal need to collect some debris. So basically we interfere after receiving orders from the race direction to slow down the pack in a way that not only becomes safer for the drivers, but also for the team that's working on the track. This car is a hybrid, isn't it? So it's got an electric battery and electric motor, but it's not charged up by plugging into the wall, is it? It uses these wireless pads to charge the car wirelessly. How does yes. that work? It's really easy, you know, I just park the car over these pads. We have an app on the car. It will give me exactly the position the car starts the communication with the pad. So you're reversing into the garage, watching the app on, the, on your little screen and it starts to beep or something as you get close. Is that how it works? Ex exactly. Oh, okay. Also looking back uh, to not crash in someone, <laughs> but uh, yes, it's really easy. And then soon you are aligned with the pad, the car starts immediately to charge. It's like magic. So during an active session like the race or practice or qualifying, whereabouts are you in the car at that point? Normally at uh, pit exit, we have the Qualcomm uh, Allo system underneath the car, charging the car all the time. So basically, if I receive any instruction to intervene, I'm absolutely 100% ready with the batteries charged just to hit the track. So Steve, tell me a little bit about exactly how this works then. Well, the way that you transfer power over the air is what we call magnetic resonance. If you run a current through a coil, through a wire, that's going to generate a magnetic field. Then the other side, a transformer has a coil where the magnetic field causes a current to go on the other side. And all we're doing is we're separating the field. That's how we're able to throw electricity over the air through magnetism. To me, that sounds like there might be some hazards by transferring electricity across the airwaves. It is safe, but one of the areas we focused is safety systems. So we have systems called living object protection. In case um, a cat or something were to run under the car, it turns off the field. Or uh, for an object detection, if you have a coin or a metal object or it's a magnetic field. So we have these safety systems. We've invested actually quite a bit in making sure that the system's safe and we're going through all the safety and regulatory uh, globally. So there's a pad on the floor and there's another pad presumably, I haven't seen it yet, but underneath the car and you line the two up. In practice, as a driver of a car like this, how easy is it to get those two pads aligned? Oh, it's, it's super easy. I mean, if you think about electric vehicles, right, every auto OEM is coming out with electric cars. Yeah. But there's a, a, a user experience challenge with maybe some of the older generation. My parents don't want to plug a car in every time they go to the garage and they're worried about range anxiety. If you could just pull into your garage or pull into your parking space and the car starts charging magically and you don't have to do anything, we think that's really what's going to get us to the early majority and you know, kind of cross the chasm. The other thing that you have to realize is with all the, the new autonomous parking, self-driving cars or valet parking cars, self-driving car can't plug itself in. So it's going, to be, it's going to pull in over a charging pad and charge. OK, so I'm parking the FIA Formula E Qualcomm safety car. I'm about to roll it forward over the wireless charging pad and I'm looking at the app, which is on a phone on the dashboard of the car. And it's got a really self-intuitive screen. 
which lights up a circle, beeps at you a little bit like a parking sensor and gives us a big green tick when we're in exactly the right place. So simple. So where else do you think this can go in the future? If you think about taxi ranks, if you think about buses, down the road, if you think about maybe the, the highways or freeways between major metropolitan areas, those might be electrified themselves. So what you're talking about is taking the pad that we see here on the garage of the, the safety car garage and embedding that into the floor and extending it over a, a long distance. Yeah, and, and, and that is going to be the future down the road. You can make smaller batteries. Cars don't need to return to the garage at night. If we still think about shared vehicles and autonomous driving, it's going to change the way people own cars and use their cars. And we really think wireless charging is a key component of that. Obviously embedding charges in the floor is an awful lot of work, even if just at traffic lights. But the ability to recharge cars while still on the move would be revolutionary. Making recharging low fuss and stress free makes driving so much more efficient and appealing. And wireless charging is going a long way to lightening that load in the future.